Welcome to this video 2-5A. In this video, we're going to talk about differentiability, a huge idea in calculus, and we're going to make it simple for you. Uh, in the last lesson, we, we talked about using the, the limit definition of taking a derivative. Well, we got some tricks up our sleeves. We're going to show you the shortcut, and you're really going to like this, okay? Um, in the other videos, we'll talk about non-differentiability when, when um, functions are not differentiable, and then we'll also talk about the, the rated change, okay? So let's go ahead and look here. Um, first of all, just notation-wise, my screen will zoom. There we go. Um, Notation-wise, the expression d dx uh, means to differentiate with respect to x, okay? And uh, a common notation that you're going to see is dy dx or d dx of y. So we're going to um, take the derivative with respect um, to x. Okay, so here are the derivative rules. Super, super important, and this is probably the one that you will use the most. It is the power rule, and all the power rule says is if I if I want to take a derivative of a term, um, I multiply by the power, hence the term power rule, and then I drop that power by one, and we'll, we'll look at an example of that here in a second. Uh, the constant rule. Constant rule says if c is a constant and you want to take a derivative of, derivative of it, it's zero, okay? So the constant values kind of disappear when you take your, your derivative. Um, a scalar multiple rule, if c is a constant and you take the derivative of uh, c times f of x, then you have the derivative of your function and you just multiply by c, hence scalar multiple. And last, we have the sum rule. If I, if I want to take the derivative of two things that are being added together, taking the sum of them, well, then you just take the derivative of each piece individually and you can add those together. Okay, so let's look at some examples here. And here is the power rule. I got to see power. Okay, so I'm going to multiply, bring down the power. So 4 times x, and then you drop the power. That easy. Are you kidding me? Right? I didn't have to do all that junk in that last lesson. Uh, well, you still need to know how to do that. But uh, there's, there's your answer, right? Super, super simple. Okay? Uh, example two. Uh-oh. Fractions. Um, <sighs> fractions. Okay, I'm going to bring down the, 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 the power, so negative two-thirds times x, and then I have to drop the, the power by one. Okay, well, how do I drop negative two-thirds by one? Well, you just subtract one, right? It's that easy, duh, Schwarberg. Well, one, isn't one three over three? Okay, so then negative two, take away three, negative five-thirds. See, fractions aren't that scary. Don't be scared. Okay, and then um, here is kind of like the the sum the sum rule along with the constant rule. If I want to take this the the uh, derivative of this sum, right, this term plus this term, I take the the derivative of both of them. Well, I found the derivative of the first piece, but the second piece is just a constant. It's three. So when you take the derivative of a constant, the answer is always zero. All right. So there's there's example dose. Okay. Number three, um, here h of t uh, is equal to 5 minus um, 1 over 2 times t cubed. Okay, so we got to adjust this problem first. The first thing I want to do is if I'm taking the derivative uh, with respect to t, I need to have that derivative or have the, the variable in the numerator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it like this. 1 half t, and I'm going to move it up into the numerator. Now, remember your um, negative power rule. When you take a, a variable, you move it from denominator to numerator, numerator to denominator. The sign on the power changes. So now it's negative third power. Okay, so I want to take the derivative of it. Well, the derivative of 5, 0. It's just a constant. Okay, and um, now I'm going to go ahead and use the power rule. So I bring down my negative uh, 3. So this becomes a positive 3 halves, right? A negative over a negative makes positive. Okay, t to the negative fourth. We're done. That's it. That's simple. Number four. Uh, same idea here. Again, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take the derivative. But before I do this, I want to multiply out um, that cube, right? So 2x times 2x times 2x. That's 8x cubed. Okay. And now I can go ahead and, and rewrite this as 5 eighths 
x to the negative third. Okay, if this is confusing you, this setup, think about it like this. I have 5x to the negative thirds eighth. Um, sometimes it just, mathematicians, we write stuff like this off to the side. It looks, it looks neater that way. Um, so here I have this, and I want to go ahead and I want to take the derivative of this. Okay, so then f prime of x is going to be, well, I'm going to use the, the power rule. So negative 3 times 5 gives me negative 15 eighths x to the negative fourth. And ta-da, that's it. Power rule, I love it, I love it. Um, now, the power rule is so easy, we can easily take multiple derivatives. What, there's a derivative of a derivative? Yes, and we call it the second derivative. What do you think you take a derivative of the second derivative is called? Third derivative, you're so smart. And the fourth derivative would be the derivative of the third derivative, you see? It's very easy. Okay, um, so let's introduce you to this idea. Higher order derivatives. Muy importante. My, my favorite Spanish phrase, muy importante. It just feels, feels good. Muy importante. Right? Um, since the derivative of a function is another function, we can repeat differentiation process to find the derivative of a derivative. Higher order derivatives. The result is another function which um, could be, again, differentiated. Okay? So um, just some, some notation. So if you see, um, so here's f prime, right? That's the derivative of f of x. Then you see f hyphen hyphen. Uh, that's f double prime, right? f triple prime. Um, and then here we have the fourth derivative, okay? So I guess they got tired of writing little tick marks, right? Now it's just parentheses four, okay? Um, so that's just some, some notation on, on derivatives. So let's go ahead, let's check out an example. So here is example five. Okay, and um, they want a couple of things. They, they say if you have this function f of x, they want you to find f prime of one and then f double prime of negative eight. So uh, the first thing that we have to do to, in order to find these and evaluate them is evaluate um, f, of prime. So what I'm going to do first do, I'm going to rewrite f of x, um, and I'm going to write this as one half, right? And this is um, x to the power of two thirds. Okay, so again, let me rewrite this. Oh no, drum line. Can you hear the drums? x to the power of negative thirds, negative two thirds. Do you guys know I was in drum line in high school? True story, I was. Bass drum and xylophone, rocket. Okay, so here's f of x. Um, now what I wanna do is I wanna take the derivative of this, f prime, okay? So I'm gonna use my power rule. So negative two thirds comes down. I multiply that with one half x, and then I have to drop the power by one, which we already said is negative five thirds, okay? So, um, here, our twos cancel, and we get negative one third x to the negative five thirds. Okay, so there's there's your first derivative. Um, now, if I want f prime of one, right? I want to evaluate the derivative at one. All I do is you just plug in one. It's as simple as evaluating any other any other function, right? So I have negative one third times one to the power of negative five thirds, which we just know is negative one third. Okay, so there's there's f prime of one. Um, to take the second derivative of our function, we're going to use the same function here, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna take that that derivative. So I'm going to use again the power rule. So this is equal to negative five thirds. That's a three, I promise. Times negative one third. That's a negative, I promise. Times x, and then again we're going to we're going to drop the power again by one. So negative eight thirds. Okay. And when this is all said and done. 
So we get 5 ninths x to the negative 8 thirds. Okay? So uh, what do they want with our with the double prime? They want f double prime of 8. So all we have to do is just plug it in. Plug it in, plug it. Oh, they want negative 8. Negative. Okay. I can do that. And guess what? We're done because this is a numerical answer. I don't have to simplify. If I had a calculator, I mean, I could. Um, but there you go. I mean, I could do it without a calculator too, but uh, two to the eighth. Um, next, last thing we're gonna talk about in this video is the equation of a tangent line. So common practice in calculus, you'll see one of these pop up on the, on the AP exam most likely. Uh, what is the equation of a tangent line? So since the derivative of a function gives us the slope formula for tangent lines to the graph of a function, the derivative can be used to find uh, equations of tangent lines, right? So the slope of the derivative is the tangent, okay? So slope of, of um, the, the tangent line, that is your derivative, okay? I hope I said that right. Slope of the tangent line is your derivative, okay? You need to know that. Um, and what we'll do, we'll look at this, um, they introduce a, a new term called a, a normal line, and a, a normal line is the line perpendicular to the tangent line at a certain point, okay? And remember what we know about uh, if I have a, a line and I want a line perpendicular, right, their slopes are opposite reciprocals, okay? And that's, that's all that this box here is saying. So number six, finding equation of the line tangent to the graph f of x. Uh, at the point one six. Okay, well, I need two things to make a line. What do I need? I need slope and I need a point. Okay, well, I have the point and if I want the slope of a tangent, hey, that's the derivative. Okay, so I'm going to say f prime of x is equal to, and I'm going to use my power rule, 20x to the power of 4 minus 6x. Okay, all I did was, was take the power rule there and I have my derivative. Now, what's my x value? Okay, well, I have a point, it's one, so I plug in one, 20, minus six, which is 14. Okay, so I found my slope, my slope's 14. So what's the, the tangent line equation? I'm so glad you asked. Y minus Y1, our Y1 value is, is six, equals M, okay, and our M value, our slope's 14, and that is x minus 1, right? This is our uh, point slope form. Okay, there it is. Done. Uh, number seven, find an equation of the normal line to the same curve at the same point. Well, if I know that the slope of my tangent line is equal to 14, then the slope of my normal line is going to be the opposite reciprocal, so negative 1 14th. Okay, so it's literally the same exact equation, you just adjust your slope. Y minus six equals negative one fourteenth X minus one. That's it. There's a differentiation with using um, power rule, constant rule, uh, scalar multiple rule, and don't tell me, don't tell me, the sum rule, okay? Um, so, there's differentiation, making a line. In the next videos, we'll talk about non-differentiability and rate of change. Peace.